We'll start with a Graham Potter Derby. Brighton, they're home, hosting Chelsea. The Seagulls, plus 187. Home underdogs, Chelsea, plus 150. The draw, plus 230. These odds and all the odds we will be referencing coming to you from our friends at Bet365. This is an interesting one for a lot of different reasons. I think Chelsea's been overperforming. We got the Potter situation and also some fatigue and injury issues for the Blues. They were just in Salzburg on Tuesday. They got the win. They've played eight games since October 1. They've played nine games under Graham Potter. They've lost zero games, six wins, three draws, a plus 2.2 expected goal differential in those games, but they've allowed 5.2 expected goals in their last four matches. So they've been a little bit leakier. They just haven't been as impressive over the past few weeks, I think, as as they're kind of adjusting to the Potter system. Now they walk into the Amex. You know, the it's going to be a great atmosphere, I think. This this probably is the game of the weekend. Uh, and I like Brighton here uh, as a home dog, plus 187. It's good enough for me. So give me the Zarbies. Man, Alexis McAllister just signed a new contract. We love him. Good vibes at the Amex. BJ, Brighton? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm on Brighton as well. So there's a trend that I've kind of been noticing with Chelsea over the last few matches that is really alarming when you're going to go play Brighton. And it's how easily teams have been able to move the ball and build up play. So against Manchester United, United has 78% uh, 78% build up uh, pass percentage. And their and Chelsea's pass per defensive action was, was 15. Then against Brentford, who is a way more direct team, they had a 73.1% build up rate. And Chelsea only had a pass per defensive action of 11. Same thing with Aston Villa. They had over 82% buildup percentage. Chelsea only had a pass per defensive action of, of 10. Deserby is very adamant that he wants to play out of the back. Like he is, is going to play out of the back here, which it, it's interesting because against Manchester City, Brighton held 53% possession and the field tilt was 50 50. I can't really remember a time that a team was able to do that to Manchester city. That's incredibly impressive. So I think Brighton actually should be able to control possession here. They should be able to play through Chelsea's pressure. They'll do it by, you know, creating overloads in between the lines, these complex passing structures that Zerbi has been very famous for. And it's honestly working here with Brighton because he's played, you know, three big six sides already. And they have about, you know, an even expected goal differential under him. So they've been incredibly impressive and Chelsea I mean, you mentioned it, Michael. Defensively, they haven't been that good. They've allowed 5.2 expected goals in their last four matches. They've been outshot in the penalty area, 33 to 25 in those matches. And the thing about it is, Graham Potter obviously knows his old side very, very well. But then the flip side of that, his players know exactly what Graham Potter wants to do from a tactical perspective. Plus, I mean, if you look at Chelsea's offense, they haven't really been that good this season. Like, they're only averaging 1.1 non-penalty expected goals per match. That's 11th in the Premier League. They've only created three big scoring chances since Potter's been in charge. So... Um, and then you mentioned the rest, uh, Michael, that Chelsea, this is their fifth road match in 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. Like, so this is a great spot for Brighton who played, honestly outplayed Chelsea in both meetings last season. Obviously Potter was in charge of Brighton at that point, but yeah, I have actually been Brighton projected as a slight favorite here. So I'm with you. I like the Seagulls draw no bet at plus one Oh five. Yeah. The Seagulls on the South coast. I, I'm, I'm excited for this. I really can't wait for the reception. Uh, for Potter, you know, the Brighton fans are great. Like they, they are, they don't take it for granted and we don't take Brighton they know for ball. granted. Yeah. They know ball. They know and, ball. We, and we, we don't take Brighton for granted on this podcast, Anthony. We do not. Yeah. I think there was a fear, right? When Potter left, we were like, oh no, Brighton's ruined, but it turns out they're still pretty good. And, you know, a few weeks ago, I bet Brighton at home as a pick them against Tottenham. And, and I recall being criticized for that position. And um, it was, now, fair I stand fair, by that. Yeah, that was, I stand that by was that. fair criticism. I don't agree. I thought that match was, uh, was well dominated by Brighton in terms of possession and, and controlling chances, but they did lose. So I guess you're right. But I think this is a great spot for Brighton as well. You guys talked about the rest advantage. Chelsea played Salzburg. They weren't particularly good. I mean, they scored two great finishes into the top corner by Havertz and Kovacic, but on the balance of the chances, that game was very even. Uh, they, they were not the better side against Man United at home last weekend. They were not better than Brentford at Brentford. They were not better than Villa at Villa. So that's four straight matches where you cannot confidently say that Chelsea was the best opponent on the pitch. And you could make the case that Brighton is the toughest spot of those, of those five games now that they're on the road against a team, which, you know, we, we talked about it. 
you mentioned the field tilt, been impressive, but what's been most impressive to me is that Brighton doesn't look like they've missed a beat whatsoever. I mean, their performances were always going to be, or their, their results were always going to be tough to get because of their schedule, right? They've played Liverpool uh, and they've played Manchester City. They played Tottenham. Like that's a really tough schedule for, for a manager. And they go to Bright, they go to Brentford. That's a really tough fixture. Like we've talked about that. Uh, the Forest one was super unlucky. So they're, they're due for a good result here. And, and they've played well enough to deserve that. And I think that they are um, wrongly underdogs. I agree with both of you. I make them a favorite in this match and I'll be betting them at any dog price. Uh, so give me Brighton on the draw no bet line. Let's make it three for three. The Derby boys in the Grand Parter Derby. Derby. 